we are gonna talk synths. <laughs> about some synths here, about one synth in particular. But first of all, welcome to Talking Synths. I'm Sam. I'm Carlos. We're from Centaur, and Centaur is a place where you can get parts for your keyboards, mm -hmm. or you can get keyboards for your parts. We have plenty of both. We sell uh, a lot of used vintage keyboards. We sell a lot of new keyboards. And today we're going to talk about one special one that we have mm -hmm. that's a, a used vintage keyboard. It's right here in front of us, this beastly Yamaha CS60. Oh man, what a keyboard. So this is kind of like a home war game? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like, uh, r reminds me of the shirt Lucas is wearing right mm -hmm. now. It shows a mini mug. It says, cool piano, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of like a home organ in that it has black and white keys, but boy, it goes so far beyond. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I guess you're referring to the CS60 or CS80 80. that we got once, and uh, the the guy had bought it for his wife because she wanted a organ mm -hmm, to play at church. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man, what an organ she got! It does have a great organ patch on it, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's got some some great sounds on it, uh, but. It's such a quality, overbuilt, mm -hmm. uh, well-engineered thing that it's just such a joy to play. Um, the the aftertouch in the keys and and the uh, do you call these sliders or well so some of them are certainly sliders some of them are more like they, these they, they pivot yeah, yeah yeah and they just feel man so I didn't, I didn't wonderful. Realize, so the sixty does have aftertouch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Is it polyphonic like the 80? Uh-huh. But yeah, you press a little harder and you can uh, increase the uh, the filter is where it's set up right now. Um, you can add some vibrato. It just feels so nice and sounds great. Got the ring modulator. Yeah. Let's get a. Uh, so we're just scrolling through the presets right now. Yeah. <laughs> you can make some pretty drastic differences with the sound there. Go ahead and play. I guess you can increase the speed up into the audio range. Yeah. Uh, and get just crazy metallic clangorous sounds. Um, and then it's got this. Mm -hmm. You can do some polyphonic sweeping around with that mm -hmm. uh, pitch ribbon. Yeah. It's and then really let, cool. let's not forget the, uh, the oh, glissando. Yeah. <laughs> That's a pretty rare feature that's not on many synths at all. On this, on the CS80, on, uh, boy, there are just a handful of synths that, mm -hmm. that have it. I can't think of what else. But you can switch between Portamento and Glissando. Mm -hmm. And technically what's happening there is Portamento is just, when you play one note and then you play another one across mm -hmm. the range of the keyboard, you just get this smooth glide up to that mm -hmm. note with Portamento. 
and of course you can control the speed. And with Glissando, uh, it doesn't give you that smooth, it goes half step by half step. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting effect. Wow. Oh, you got, you got it off. Pretty, pretty uncommon to find that mm -hmm. in, in a synthesizer. And like the CS80 has the little trap door here and you can program one stored patch you get, there. You get one whole memory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, you access that by pressing panel here. Let's see what's in there. <laughs> turn, uh, Got some resonance on that patch. <laughs> Pretty cool. Uh, the other cool thing about this is who it belongs to. Oh yeah, who does yeah. it belong to currently? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, currently it belongs to uh, uh, John King, King Gizmo of the Dust Brothers. And when we went to visit him not long ago, he said, I have this CS60, I need to, mm -hmm. need to scale down a bit, so I'm not sure if it works all the way or what, but, but I want to sell it. And so mm -hmm. we said, well, let us take it back to the shop. We'll make sure it does work all the way, and then we'll, we'll sell it for you if, yeah. if you like. And he was very into that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're in the process of getting it working all the way, mm -hmm. and we're practically there. And it's, yeah, it's, it's a great machine and gives you some bragging rights. To, yeah. Uh, just in case you don't know, Dust Brothers um, and, and King Gizmo produced the um, Paul's Boutique album for the Beastie Boys. Mm -hmm. Kind of a, how, how do you call that? A um, cult classic. <laughs> yeah, de definitely that, yeah. Definitely made some people stand up and take note. Uh, I did the music for Fight Club, the movie, mm -hmm. with uh, Brad Pitt. Is that Brad Pitt mm -hmm. in that movie? Yeah. I don't know my actors too well, but. <laughs> um, and what, he's got a Grammy for his work with Carlos Santana? Mm hmm. Mm, some great stuff there. So, yeah, this, this definitely has some good heritage. And, and he's got an amazing collection of synths. So. And drum machines. <laughs> drum machines for days. And, and tape echoes and mm -hmm. uh, guitar stomp boxes and all kind of stuff. And you, you did an interview with him, correct? Yeah. Talking Synths? Yeah, we did a Talking Synths a few, a few episodes ago. Yeah, so if that's a, an episode that some of y'all out there missed, I would definitely you know hit rewind and check out that video. Can you rewind this one and get to it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, we never we never say. I always forget to say. You know, if you like what we're doing here, click that subscribe button and mm -hmm. click that like button because that does something for us, doesn't it? I have no idea how the <laughs> internet works. <laughs> I don't either. You hit that button and something happens in the internet and uh, it gives mm -hmm. us a warm glow in the heart. So. Yeah. Because we love what we're doing. We mm -hmm. love sharing it with the people out there. So. Yeah. Let's uh, let's play a few more of these. This is flute. Let's add a little more vibrato in there. And less brilliance. It's really an expressive keyboard, and the, the way it's set up, you have the uh, presets here. Uh, what, we have 12 of them, I think? Four, yeah, 12. You have 12 presets, one memory location hiding in that trap door, mm -hmm. and then you can select what's currently on the panel. Uh, so, so basically 14 things at the, at, at the touch of a button. Um, 
and the, and the way it all works, uh, when you when you select panel, you have a row of sliders up here mm -hmm. that it refers to. When you select any program panel or one of these presets, uh, the bottom row of stuff here and the mm -hmm. things on the panel here are things you can adjust um, for that patch. So in other words, long story short, I have the flute selected. If I go up here on the top panel and I change anything, it's not going to make any difference because I'm playing a preset. But on this second row of stuff, um, I can grab these what look like sliders, but they're pivoty things. What'd you, what'd you call them? <laughs> rockers. <laughs> yeah, kind of rockers that feel so good. And you can change the brilliance. You can add uh, resonance. Yeah, that, that's one thing that I've always noticed on the CS range is that there's so many cascading um, just features. You know, if, if you kind of think of it as a, uh, your sound as a stream of water, there's so many different ways to change the flow and the shape of it. Well, um, you, you know, it, e even nice on the analogy. presets. Yeah, I, I had a guy <laughs> call up here once and he was like, I'm thinking about buying the CS80. Can you all modify the presets for me? <laughs> and uh, so, and essentially what he was talking about is, you know, the, the same way that there's the memory bank and you have your sliders up top, the presets are essentially rows of resistors yeah. where yeah. those values are hard set. And so over time, what people have done is they'll pull those resistor banks out and modify them to their liking, which to me as a technician is kind of horrifying, you know, taking a, yeah. <laughs> an, a, an instrument of this prestige that there aren't that many of, gutting it and swapping out those resistor values. And, and I, I told him, well, you don't have a CS80 yet, do you? And of course he said no. And I said, well, there are so many tone shaping tools at your fingertips. Even if you're using the presets, there's so many things that you can do afterwards to mm -hmm. modify those tones. You can really think of them as good starting points and you can still totally find your own unique voice using presets because of the tools the Yamaha has given you after the fact. Yeah, but that, that's an interesting concept. Um, the, the sound is shaped by the position of all these sliders, mm -hmm. which are just resistors. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, the, the presets just echo what the sliders mm -hmm. would be with hard value resistors. Yeah. So by changing any resistor, you're basically changing the position of where any given slider is. So theoretically, yes. it's a really simple thing. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, uh, uh, in a practical sense, when you open up a CS80, yeah. uh, there are fat looms of wires mm -hmm. running everywhere. And it seems like everything mm -hmm. is well, not every, well, there, there's, there's wires everywhere. <laughs> it's a spaghetti factory. And, uh, these a were very high-end spaghetti factory. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But these were made in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And so that was a long time ago that those wires were mm -hmm. soldered and everything mm -hmm. was put together. And so in a practical sense, to take out one of those mm -hmm. boards, to change one of the resistors, you're messing with those wires that are all in place and uh, the connectors and, the, and there's a lot that could go wrong. Yeah, and you know, my, my main apprehension would just be human error, you know, mm -hmm. um, and then also, I'm always amazed at the craftsmanship inside of these instruments as oh, far as, yeah. you know, the, the two CS80s that we worked on, those looms, even after decades, were still taut, you know, mm -hmm. we're still very tight. Um, but with an instrument of this age, what I do worry about is the electrostatic discharge. You know, you get in there, you start Those moving things around, and, and you zap a chip. And oh <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's a it's a horrifying thought that some people have pulled chips mm -hmm. from a CS60 to save a CS80. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's like uh, I I have this Ferrari, and I'm gonna scrap it because I need the parts to put in this Lamborghini <laughs> or something. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, God. But, yeah, this this and the CS80 uh, use a lot of proprietary chips. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're very much similar uh, yeah. electronically in, in the structure of the voice and all that. So, yeah, so, so they do share a lot of those chips. So the, the ring mod is one, you know, the ring mod is one that's done on a proprietary Yamaha IC, the key assigner the way that it's assigning polyphony and, and rotating through the voices. 
Um, so just things of that nature, you know that yeah. if, if you fry one of because we, we actually had to do that once here to save a CS40. We had two CS40s and one of them was just, it was gonna need a, a ton of work. The, CS, the other CS40 was like 90% of the way there, but the ring mod was out and um, it came down to that proprietary Yamaha IC. And seeing as how we did have a parts unit at that point, it made more sense to pull the ring mod chip out of one CS40 and put it into another. And did yeah. you try calling Mauser and see if they, <laughs> have that if chip they had or? it? <laughs> um, I've seen there's there's one I don't re and and they usually have the prefix of IG so it's like IG right. 0017 or yeah. uh, things of that nature and I keep an eye on Reverb just to see what different chips pop up from time to time and there there's one a guy wants like two grand for a proprietary Yamaha IC and it says it says new old stock but you can clearly see where it's been desoldered from a board. You know, because the the, sometimes there's like flux and resin left on, on the legs. And it's like, it, am I really going to spend two grand on a chip that might fail in another year or two? You know, I, and it, that's not mm. saying that it will, that you're just really taking a big risk. Yeah. So, but to open up an instrument and start messing around in there, you know, you, you really have to know what you're doing. Yeah. One, uh, one little slip or one little yeah. uh, mindless. I mean, I've, I've, yeah. I've done it before where it's a long day of tech work and it's, it's getting towards the end of the day and you're like, oh, I'm going to button this project back up and, you know, you put an IC in backwards. That's all it takes and then all of a sudden you have voltage to the wrong pin and it's fried. You know, luckily I've only done that with like super cheap op amps. Yeah. You know, we're like, all right, it's a 4558, I can grab another one and pop it right back in and we'll be good to go. Yeah, yeah, you haven't had to get on reverb and uh, look for a two thousand dollar yeah. chip, no, <laughs> or eBay. Yeah, yeah. Oh God. Yeah, um, I know. Like someone the in, in the CS twenty, CS forty, CS thirty range, they tend to have a lot more um, CV and gate I/O in the back. And I've mm -hmm. seen you know where someone says, "Oh, you know, this is a cool instrument. I'm going to interface it with my Euro rack," but totally not paying attention to the standards because you're talking different standards over different decades and you send a 10 volt peak to peak signal into something that was only designed to handle five volts, yeah. maybe unipolar, not even bipolar voltage. And that, that's another way I've seen people fry um, proprietary Yamaha ICs. Man, um, I, I guess I'll throw in there that one of those proprietary ICs, I can't remember which one, but we, we have a source for someone that has mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. reverse engineered that. Oh yeah, we do. Made, made a basically a tiny circuit board mm -hmm. that plugs in where the IC mm -hmm. plugs in and it works exactly like that that yeah. IC chip would. But what a project that would be, huh? Man, yeah, I'm, I'm always is... amazed at people that can do that. Because you know, essentially these ICs are made up of larger discrete components that have been scaled down mm -hmm. to perform the, the same purpose. And just someone that has the mind and the ability to do that um, it, it, it's really cool. And then I've even seen people where they, they skim off the top of the IC to kind of like depot it to, to see what's inside oh, and see how it's laid out. Wow. But of course, remember, you have to have a working IC to compare it to. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Funky one. Funky one. Try funky too. <laughs> a lot of fun to play with yeah. that. Anyway, such such a cool keyboard, um, and we'll have it uh, mm -hmm. available for sale in in a short time. Yamaha CS60, belonging to John King Gizmo, mm -hmm. King of the Dust Brothers. Anyway, with that with that, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and bid you modulator. modulator.